Right guys, well done if you've made it past the last two 16 markers. This is schizophrenia question six, and we're gonna be looking at biological treatments for schizophrenia. Now, although we're gonna be looking at a 16 marker for treating schizophrenia, I did say back at the beginning of this playlist that I was gonna be focusing largely on questions that have come up in the past. So we are gonna have a look at an eight marker as well, because an eight marker came up in the exam back in 2017. So we'll go through how to write a full 16 marker first before having a look at how to cut it down for an eight marker. And as always, before we get started, if you find this video useful, please let me know by hitting the like button. Right, so here's your question. It's a relatively straightforward question in terms of the wording. The only thing you need to be aware of is the fact that you're being asked to discuss rather than outline and evaluate. So in my AL1, I'm just gonna talk about antipsychotics. I'm not gonna completely split them into typical and atypical, but rather I'm going to start by talking about the similarities of both, because when it boils down to it, they both work in very similar ways. I'm then gonna branch off and talk about the differences, with the main focus being on the sedation effect for the typical antipsychotics and the effect on serotonin for the atypical antipsychotics. In my AL3, I'm gonna use three main evaluation points. The research support, followed by some talk about the side effects and why they make the drugs less effective. I'll then finish off with a discussion point on the moral dilemmas of using antipsychotic medication. The one little extra thing I am going to do is squeeze a little economic implication point in there, and the only reason I'm going to do that is because the examiner's report mentioned that anyone who attempted to do that in the exam didn't do it very well, and it's something they would have liked to have seen more of. So, just because of that, I'm going to chuck a little sentence in there about it just to show you how you could do it. So I'm going to move on to the essay. If you want to give it a go yourself, then remember to pause the video before the answer pops up. So my model answer is going to be set out like this. A nice concise outline. It's roughly 160 words. You don't need much more than that. Like I said before, I haven't separated out the two types. I've tried to integrate them as best I can although there are some differences that you're obviously going to want to talk about, and I start talking about those about halfway through. My evaluation points are set out exactly as I said in the plan. You can see the little section on economic implications at the end of the first evaluation point. It doesn't have to be long or special in any way, but a correct mention on how the use of drug therapies could positively benefit the economy is always a good idea if you can have a go at it. Keep in mind, please, that we are evaluating the effectiveness of drug therapies. So in the second point, which is all about side effects, the point that you're eventually going to want to get to is that negative side effects could cause patients to stop taking their medication, which ultimately makes the treatment ineffective because people aren't taking the drugs that will make them feel better. The final point is the discussion point, which explores whether the use of antipsychotics is morally correct or not. OK, so that point has both sides of the coin within it. OK, so officially I've got three evaluation points, but arguably I've added some detail in a variety of places like the economic implications and the final discussion point, which will help me to elevate my answer to a level four. Now, as I said earlier, this essay actually came up as an eight marker back in 2017. So I'm going to show you what a cut down version of this essay would look like. And effectively, it's gonna be pretty much the exact same essay we just went through with a few little bits taken out. So for example, the outline gets less detail. I'm still gonna talk about typical and atypical antipsychotics, but I'm gonna focus mainly when it comes to the differences on the fact that atypical antipsychotics act on the serotonin system and therefore also attack negative symptoms. But that's pretty much the only difference I would mention. I'm also going to get rid of my discussion point and just have my first two evaluation points. If you want to remove the bit about the economic implications as well, then you can. But if you feel confident talking about it, then leave it in because it's always a nice point to use. OK, so let's have a look at the actual essay. I've got a nice short outline. It's about 90 words rather than 160. And then my evaluation points themselves haven't been made any shorter but I've just simply used less of them. 
Obviously, it goes without saying, you could just as easily have used two other evaluation points if you want. These are just the ones that I decided to use. Remember, it is a discussion question, so you need to make sure that you're giving both sides of the argument, otherwise you're not discussing. Okay, so at least one strength and one limitation is going to be perfect. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's all been useful and I hope it's made sense. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.